All right. I just want to talk about this book I'm reading um, from Logos to Trinity, the evolution of religious beliefs from Pythagoras to Tertullian, Tertullian by Marion Hiller, Cambridge University Press. What year is this? 2012, I think. This guy's a professor of religious studies. He's a European, but he teaches in the U.S. That's my understanding. I heard him online. Sounds like he's got a European accent. Now, this book is really stunning because he, you know, it's like I don't want to give it away, but I mean, it is like a dry academic book, you know, like it's going to, it's, it's a slow uh, read. And so first of all, he starts going over the Pythagorean views. He does a pretty good job. I'm, in, I'm impressed. I mean, he's just summarizing. And it's all historical. So like how, you know, how everybody's views are different from each other. And um, you're going along. And uh, let's see. So with the Stoics, they start getting more, you know, left brain dominant, where they're saying, well, you know, it's about reason, and that reason is sort of this what makes humans special, of course. Now, here he focuses on philo or philo or whatever the Jewish philosopher who incorporated the Greek views about the logos into Judaic views. And of course, we know that this was the foundation of Christianity, but it's always been kind of hazy. We know Eusebius promoted the official Christian view that was then adopted by the Roman Empire. So he was like the official Roman imperial Christian historian. He was a he was like a real brown noser for the Roman Empire. But the this goes this book really goes back to the or, very origin of Christianity. And this is the first book that really nails it, that really it focuses on um on uh Justin Martyr, the guy Justin Martyr, who was in the first century AD. And it goes, it says what happened, his student, Justin Martyr was in Rome, but then he got, he got martyred, hence his name, but he, his student went back to Edessa, which was in Turkey, and that was the Eastern view. And they had, this, this is about, this is when the, Justin Martyr was the first to really create Christianity as a philosophy, as a religion, you know, writing it down. And, um, you know, you, you never learn this. If, you, if you're raised as a Christian in the church, I mean, you don't learn about Justin Martyr. You know, you don't know who he is. I mean, you might have heard his name mentioned or something. So, 
This is last time I mentioned this book before about the book of Enoch, Enoch being a big influence on Christianity. So he he gets into the whole, you know, the first Christians were, of course, Hebrew or Jewish, Jewish and um. But what Justin Martyr did was really focus on the Greek philosophy. And what this did is it changed the meaning of the of the logos because philo or philo, I don't know, it's philo would be the Greek. He his version of the logos was more like um, Egyptian and and Greek, like the Pythagorean and Egyptian. But the but along came Plato, and I've already documented, you know, Archytas and Plato. Of course, this book doesn't get into the mathematics at all. It does say that Justin Martyr, um, you know, relied on numerology. Um, but the the essential thing is something I never really realized, you know, because you, you learn about the Trinity, you know, transubstantiation. I mean... You know, let's face it. It's it's kind of hard to accept. Like you're raised in raised in the Christian Christianity, you're thinking. You know, if you're logically, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. But um, so yeah, he's talking about here the how Justin Martyr was the first to actually historicize um, Jesus into a a person, you know, based on the Greek idea of a God that dies and as a person. So, um, now, like he, like this author says, well, if you look at the very first Christians, they don't have a historical, they don't have a historical Jesus. The, the idea of Christ is a, as the Messiah is a Jewish idea, and it's more of a um, cosmic idea, you know. Like, a, I mean, there's there's the there's also a political aspect of it. But what he's saying is that basically, the the political thing it didn't happen, you know. So then they globbed on they globbed onto the Greek idea with the logos that was already incorporated into Judaism and they basically went that direction where you're you're taking a cosmic logos and then you're personifying it. Now what's fascinating is that this is different than the book of John because the book of John has the logos but his point is that the logos in the book of John is more like the original Jewish logos that also like is more like the Egyptian Egyptian logos and early Greek um and so then um and it and this this author he says well he says if he studied the the Christian scholars, they, they basically admit that there's there's no reason to believe that Jesus actually existed, you know, as a person. Which right there, that's that's not what you're taught in, in the church, obviously. You're not taught that Jesus is a mythical, um, you know, like a, more like a, a concept. And so then... So what? What's so the um, so here he even gets into the Sanskrit, and um, the okay. So so the Book of John was later because you still you're still working on this concept of the logos and how to. 
historicize it, you know, and to turn it into a person. And because um, Justin Martyr, he basically copied this this um, other philosopher named Numenius, who was a Platonic philosopher alive at the same time as uh, Justin Martyr. And so um, the... So it wasn't, you know, it took a while for the historicization of Jesus as a person, you know, was sort of developed. But um, the, okay, just to cut to the chase here. So he's getting, okay, yeah, he said that, like even Eusebius quotes, cites this guy, um, Theophilus, Theophilus, who was a similar, similar as um, Justin Martyr. They're basically, they're, the big point is from Philo is that the idea of the logos is you have this internal logos as like the power, the internal power of God. And then you have this external voice of the emanation and so the Greek concept is the Logos was always there, so it was innate to um, God. But the Justin Martyr is saying, no, no, the Logos had to be um, created, you know, by God as part of the Trinity. So, and then, and so what, so when you, when you read like the book of John and say, well, you know, God said, let there be light. That said, is is Jesus Christ before any creation, but but God still had to create the logos as you know this personified Jesus Christ um, that existed eternally, you know, and. So it's a it's um basically you're reading this and you're thinking, you know, Justin Martyr, he was he was kind of bonkers. I mean he but he this is he created he was the one who created Christianity. He was relying on these um writings writings of Jesus, but they were again they weren't they were like just cosmic principles from Judaism. They weren't based on a, this claim of a historical Jesus. And he got that from Greek religion. And um, so, So in the Justin scheme, on the contrary, there are two generations. The first of the Logos is before the creation as a being, the pneumatic Logos, and pneumatic meaning breath as the Holy Spirit, but breath as the um, power of God, you know, the, the Holy Spirit as breath. Which is, which is also the origin of the word conspiracy and um, also chi. The, the Son of God who has the name Christ because of his function and commission, and the second as an incarnation into Jesus the man. So um, the whole point here is what is the, what is the logos? What does the logos mean? Now, I went to a Christian um, private school for middle school and high school, and we studied the book of John in middle school, and that was all about the Logos. And I immediately connected it back to um, Pythagorean uh, music theory that I was learning already. I guess I was like, 
I don't know. I, I don't, I didn't take theory yet. I must have known enough theory to make the connection. Anyway, um, so what I'm trying to say is I, I used my own music experience. I had a different understanding of, um, you know, the logos. I had the, the Book of John understanding, which went back to um, the pre-Socratic logos. Whereas um, Justin Martyr was relying on this, a Platonic concept of the logos. And um, like I said, you know, his views were really bizarre. They're bizarre views, but you can, it makes sense. Now you can understand how Christianity was created. And that's, um, you know, it's a pretty bizarre thing to say because obviously everybody, you know, Christianity is like a really common, it's the dominant religion in the West, obviously. And so it's really important to understand, well, how did it, how did it get developed, you know, as a religion, as a belief system? Um, you could even call it a, a cult if you want to. And anyway, I have to, I haven't finished the book yet. It's just so intriguing. And it's a riveting read. And it ties in, I mean, like, uh, you know, Professor David F. Noble I mean, everybody knows it's like what Platonic philosophy um, inspired, uh, you know, St. Augustine. St. Augustine's based on Platonic philosophy. But you don't really know the nitty-gritty details. And it all goes back to Justin Martyr in the, the like the, well, I guess it was the second century A.D. because he was writing in the, in the hundreds, the hundreds. Um, so the Gospels were produced as a midrash, that is a form of Jewish reworking of Hebrew Bible texts. Um, The extracted from Matthew and Lark makes no mention of his death and resurrection. Only gradually did Jesus become accepted as a historical figure, as is attested by many Christian documents that do not have the notion of a human being as an element of their faith. So there you go. Thanks very much.